before we get into loyal specifically, um, let's go just a little farther back uh, when you gave in the summer of 2019 a series of lectures for the Longevity Fund's Venture Fellows on basically the basics of building one of these biotechnology companies. Yeah. So it's really interesting. I, I looked through some of it. Uh, I'll definitely link it in the show notes. But uh, maybe we can just it highlights, you know, first steps, raising money, building in bio, and then regulation and clinical trials. Because it seems like you obviously have to have a roadmap of somewhere where you're going to go or where you want to go. But then it seems in this kind of area or arena of biotechnology, you are at the frontier, you know, kind of the bleeding edge of science and stuff like that. So maybe regulation, how you tiptoe and, and how you get funding. Uh, so maybe let's just, you know, gloss over what is, you know, biotechnology, specifically therapeutics for pathological aging, and then how you would maybe start and build a biotech company, you know? So basically, are you asking for like a primer on the field or? Yeah, well, yeah, basically a primer on like biotechnology, because like I, I want to kind of go mm. d differently of like what neuroscience and nanobiotechnology, because nanobiotechnology to me as a layman just seems like you're going smaller and smaller. And then biotechnology, maybe it means like you're doing larger scale therapeutics or or something like that. But maybe that, that's just because I'm not a, you know. In, in, in the know. So maybe tell the difference yeah. of that. <laughs> so biotech kind of, uh, well, it depends on the stage, but biotech kind of, okay. like the two big things are like biotech and pharma and they encompass the industry. And then there's also basic research or just like kind of research stage work, which can get funneled into biotech, um, okay. but doesn't always get funneled into biotech. So the way I think like a pharma company is basically an established um, freestanding, you know, not, maybe like self-sustaining asterisk mark uh, company. And it's actually like, quite rare for like, a pharma uh, to like, be born because it's very difficult to get to that self-sustaining state. So a lot of pharma companies go and there's like this whole industry of like taking stuff out of academia to go um, or like independent ideas, which is kind of where my, ours came from to create these biotech companies that like sometimes become independent companies, but like more often than not become actually a pharma company wow. uh, or become ad uh, acquired. Uh, by a pharma company as like basically an externalized R&D mechanism, right? Oh, if you I think about it, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe mm -hmm. we had learned, like this didn't happen, but let's say like, maybe we learned that like a specific protein is always upregulated in these mice that we induce this alcohol dependency in. And then we've shown the mice that inhibition of this protein's activity maybe ameliorated the addiction effect, right? Wow. Um, okay. If we, like, if that discovery had been made, like that would be great in academia, then usually what would happen is like the core IP about that would be out licensed to a biotech company, which would then go and develop a drug product. It would like file the regulatory filings, like maybe start a clinical study, show some proof of concept, some initial efficacy, and then usually around like the middle stage of clinical studies. So like phase two, which is basically uh, like confirmatory safety and preliminary efficacy. You know, wow. once they've shown that in people, then that would probably get acquired if it was seen promising by a pharma company to be translated into a product or more likely fail or be killed for whatever reason. Yeah. So the pipeline, man, that's so interesting. Cause I, I, I'm not obviously not versed in it, but that seems like the, the, the drug um, manufacturing and pipeline is, is something that is not for the faint of heart. You know? no. <laughs> like, oh my God. No, it, yeah. the bio is like part of it, but honestly, like CMC chemistry manufacturing controls, like the making a drug product, like if you sure. take aspirin, it's like you have the active pharmaceutical ingredient and then you have a ton of other stuff, right? And you have oh, like the sure. sugary coating and you have to make it in a standardized replicable way and you have to like package it correctly and the thing has to say the correct stuff and um, to monitor it. And it's like, there's all these things like clinical studies. Like clinical studies are damn hard to run. Like we just finished our first like non-drug study and that was damn hard. Right. Uh, well, maybe let's, let's go right into good. that. Cause that was, that was going to be, let, let's talk. The oil was going to be my next thing. So let, let's talk about that. Like what exactly was this new novel kind of things that you guys, and you guys uh, did a um, 500 participants. I think I saw all the pictures of all of them. So, uh, so cute, aren't they? <laughs> right, right. So uh, before we talk about like, uh, or maybe before we talk about that, what let's just take it up to what is loyal? Like, what is the company that you, you founded? Yeah. Uh, why? And then, yeah, let's get in right into, you know, the, the first study that you, that you guys did. Yeah. So I guess to give context, um, I was uh, working at Longevity Fund. I had zero intention to leave. Um, I was very okay with like my role being supporting Laura to, mm -hmm. you know, have her impact on the world and kind of being her foil so she would be more effective. Uh, However, and, and I never again like grew up with any of this like founder like mm, stuff, um, I which see. I think is actually really helpful because I think starting like a lot of people, I think you no, know, it's it's very difficult to not get 
seduced by the idea of starting a company sure. uh, and like seduced by like how sexy it is or whatever to be on podcasts like this and whatnot. <laughs> uh, but I thankfully didn't have any of that. I didn't get like convinced to start the company. Um, yeah. But I had the initial idea because I got really frustrated with the companies that were pitching us at Loyal uh, at Longevity Fund. It was basically like all the exact same narrative. Like, oh, we've, we found this drug or this mechanism extends lifespan by 20, 30, 40% in mice. Like, this is amazing. You know, slide five, FDA is evil. Aging isn't a disease. It's like this like canonical thing that like people who don't understand aging always tweet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry for the live subtweet. No, um, no, no. This is going to be great. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's not a disease. So, you know, we're going to go and develop the drug instead for... A specific indication, right? We're gonna develop right. osteoarthritis or just like random orphan pediatric disorder that has something to do with aging, but like happens to hit the same mechanism of action. But don't worry, like there's some like extrapolated path to how we get to people. But then, you know, when you get to uh, the slide 20, it's like the exit return slide. And it's just like, oh, we're gonna have to get acquired by Pfizer by phase three, right? <laughs> Um, and Pfizer is never going to develop it for aging. So it just like seems stupid to me that like all these shots and go. And then the other thing is like aging is a specific mechanism, right? So like expecting an aging drug that like actually holistically targets aging, it does not, uh, uh, I would, it, it, it might, but it should not like necessarily naturally or inherently also be efficacious for a very specific disease. Mm, um, okay. And so then you're leading yourself up to false fails. Like I think if the aging field dies, it's going to die um, within false fails it's and we've already seen like companies that have been struggling with that um and that's like my worst fear for loyal is false fails like i'm probably over fundraise because i'm just like it want insurance from that because it's the thesis is correct it's the, the execution and the brand biological randomness is kind of where you get get got um but anyhow so that was the context i got frustrated by this i was like how the hell can i develop a drug explicitly for you know aging and lifespan extension and nothing else i want to do any of this like stupid like bs and came to the conclusion, can't do it in humans unless I have a billion dollars. I don't have a billion dollars. Um, if you have a billion dollars, like, let me know. Um, but I realized you could do it in dogs. Uh, and you could do it in dogs um, actually relatively quickly, uh, relatively, like, easily. It's really hard. But like, sure, sure. from a relative standpoint, easier. Um, and it wouldn't cost like it didn't doesn't cost that much money to develop a drug for uh, market approval and dogs. So for contacts, it's often uh, the quoted number is two billion. Um, that like includes fails. So maybe like the actual number is somewhere between like five hundred million to eight hundred million to get a drug to like market approval, depending on the indication and whatnot. For dogs, it's like less than twenty, um, wow. and it can be even cheaper uh, too if you're just like efficient, basically. Damn. Um, so yeah, I had the idea, was not convinced about it. Uh, long story short, a VC named Greg Rosen like heard that I'd been like joking about this idea actually. Uh, and kind of over the period of a few months, him and Laura convinced me that I should really go and do this. Um, and the story I'll tell now, uh, that I didn't tell in the beginning, is I wasn't actually convinced and I didn't actually commit until I got the term sheet and signed it. Like, oh, I got the term okay. sheet and I probably like scared Greg because I like didn't like reply for a few days. And then I was like, fine. And then I signed it and I did. And I've Sign. never, you know, never regretted it. 